GB8 episode 6. Well, um, sort of a sort of a uh, contemplative episode for Sensui. Oh, by the way, they were able to manage. They were they were able to rescue Kathleen, but they had help. It's Ayame, she's a former police officer. Yung nakikita nating babae na tumutulong sa kanila during during the pilot sequence, that's her. We found out that uh, anak siya ng isang Yakuza boss. Alright? Anak siya ng isang Yakuza boss. That's the main reason why she became a cop. Kasi ayaw niya yung, ano yun, hindi siya agree sa ginagawang makakalokohan ng tatay niya. So, it, uh, it made, her, it made her decide to become a police officer. So right now, kakampi nila ngayon to. And she's really good with guns. Kasi nga, dating, dating police eh. Police dati. So, going back, um, majority of this is a, um, it's a contemplation on the part of Sensui. We now know his, uh, his origin story, his backstory, his real backstory. His parents were his parents were killed. Um, umampun sa kanya si Halbert. Okay. Halbert was the one who adopted him. And he was also the one who trained him on how to use a sword. Okay. Talagang tinrain siya for double for dual wielding. Supposedly for dual wielding talaga. And he served uh, he served the political he served the political warlord. <clears throat> Uh, from Kyushu, from Kyushu Island at the time. So, they were driven out of Kyushu. Sumama siya sa amo niya. And the rest is history. So, he just remembered what uh, what his mentor said uh, all those years ago, all those centuries ago. Uh, he said that since Sui, uh, nothing happens, nothing, uh, everything happens for a reason. Be, be, something, Basically, that's it. That's the gist of it. Eh. Everything happens for a reason. So, tinatanong na niya uh, kung anong dahil na kung bakit siya napunta sa ira yun. Sa ira natin. Sa ira ng mga Jibia. Was there a reason for it? So, now I get it. Now we know who, who trained Sensui to become to become a ruthless killer, <laughs> to become a ruthless swordsman. Now we know who she And so, yun nga, he was an orphan. Napatay magulang niya in his, uh, in, uh, in, both his parents were killed in front of him by their enemies. Eh, yun nga, nakita siya ni, ni Halbert, inampun siya. Halbert actually died of a disease. At yun din na nagsabi sa kanya na uh, yung mga, the waters of hot springs makes your makes your wounds heal faster. So, eh, binanggit kasi niyan yun eh. Ni Kinojo pala. Yuki Nojo. Sorry. <laughs> Wrong pronunciation. Ni Yuki Nojo. Na, that, that, hot, that hot springs makes, heal, makes wounds heal faster. Yun. Na, naalala niya yung naalala niya yung mentor niya. That's when he became contemplative for uh, from the middle to the left latter part of the episode. Okay. Now we know. Okay. Now we know. Then the episode ended with well, Ayame actually seeing seeing her father again. Yung head ng yakuza na nakasagupan nila Sensui noon, na pinahiya ni Sensui. That's him. <laughs> That's him. Yung yakuza boss na sinasabi. Yung yako sa boss na tatay ni, ni Ayami. That was him. So, that, that's a good plot twist. Right? That was a really good plot twist. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a decent episode. Uh, the cliffhanger was at the beginning. Kasi, uh, the previous episode ended when Kathleen was uh, got into trouble with, uh, with some Jibia. Kunti na siyang, siyang saksakay ng stinger ng isi. Parang mantis na Jibia. But uh, the three 
the three baraos who came to her rest. Actually, Ayame came to her rescue, not the uh, not the three war, not the three, not the three ancient warriors. No. It was Ayame actually. Was, uh, I tell you, she, she's really good with guns. Makahawak ng makahawak ng shotgun, talagang sanay. Kasi police. She's a former cop, so she knows how to use those guns. Yeah, it's a decent episode. And toned down, it toned down midway through kasi it focused, sorry. It focused on Sensui's past. <clears throat> on actually how he, how he, how was he, um, all this. How he was set down the path of becoming a, becoming a ruthless warrior, becoming the slayer of a thousands. Okay, now we know who taught him, who trained him, who nurtured him when uh, when he was orphaned. Now we know, and of course we also know that uh, Kathleen sort of had a flashback because when when he came to the village, she had a flashback to. Her, to her childhood days when her father was still alive. Remember, her father, uh, her father was killed uh, when she was very young, about like, four or five years old. So, sila talaga ng nani niya ang talagang nabuhay na. <clears throat> so yeah, okay. GBA episode six. Thumbs up. Okay. Why I gave you the thumbs up? Because well. I was supposed to give it like this, but I was uh, really intrigued by Sensui's uh, origin, uh, origin story and the connection Ayami has with our so uh, with our supposedly the main villain here, her own father, who is a former yakuza boss. If that ain't a plot twist to you, I don't know what is. <laughs> so again, yeah. On thumb up na muna. Now, guys, sorry if I wasn't able to um, to give you uh, the full review on episode 5 kasi talagang nagkaroon ng tef- technical difficulties. Uh, I had I had the main outlet to this uh, lab mic pulled out from the laptop. I uh, pulled it's, it's still pulled in. This is the extension right here. Okay. This is the extension extension lang ito. So, nakahugot siya. With the extension, with the extension cord still plugged into the laptop. So, ang mangyayari, nakamute. <laughs> nakamute all throughout the review. So, I had no choice but to severely edit that part. Uh, that part last week. Kapinakita ko lang lang yung ganun ko. Two thumbs up. That's, that's actually a two thumbs up because episode 5 was a really good episode. Right? So, favorite for the next episode. You know what? Um, the Yakuza bosses gang, I would really love them to to challenge to challenge our heroes. I want I want I want our heroes to put them in their place, okay? So ilagay sila sa mga lugar nila. And I want to see that look on their faces when uh, when when Sensu and the others give it to them. Woo! That would be a great episode. Episode 11. Wow. Okay. This episode. Okay. Like I said last time, I knew. Okay. I got a gut feeling who is going to win in this duel. Katatonga. Si Romin. But I never thought the flow of the duel would be that way. Okay. Yung. Um, what you call this? Um, on how. On how the duel went? Whoa, I. Umira na naman ang pagka dance ni Rook! Unbelievable! It made me laugh my ass off! <laughs> it made me laugh my ass off! Okay? So. So Roaming faces Gakoto. And we all know how. And we all know how. Uh, how Gakoto duels, okay? The Sogetsu style of dueling. Upisa ng duel. Sinabi ni. ni Roman Kayuga. 
<laughs> don't ever think na that um call this na I was forced to I was forced to spy on you okay pero um right before all of this alam na ni nakalata na ni Yuga na spy siya na merong merong may hidden agenda si Romin pasa ni Yuga I don't know he was I don't know I didn't know he was this good with me this good with reading people <laughs> wow you're you just surprising me right now first few turns na duel lamang siga ako to okay he went all out against Romin again like I said kanina he was he went all out against Romin then all of a sudden nakaramdam ng gutom si Romin alright she started feeling hungry because well Roa way before this duel talagang ginutom niya si Romin okay she uh, he uh, what you call this she uh, he starved Romin to the point of that pinakain niya lahat sa drummer yung pagkain nila okay this goes to show you how devious this Roa is Naruto reference <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's goes to show you how devious this uh, this kid is. Talagang you will have no excuse. We will have no excuse like Roa. Okay? Wala. We find we find no reason to like him. He is the main villain here. All right? So, as one time went on, okay, biglang nagutom si Romin. But, there is a bad side to her when she goes hungry. She becomes very good at the guitar and at the game. <laughs> Tough luck for Gakoto. Okay? So, she began strumming her her newly acquired uh, guitar disc na ginawa ni, na ginawa ni Yuga for her. Engkata ka, Romin! That's that she also showed how much of an ingrid she is. Alright? She's a fucking ingrid. Now, back to the duel. So, yun nga. <clears throat> she found a combo against uh against Yami Ruler, yung ace monster ni Gakoto. She found a way to to circumvent his combo. To circumvent Yami Ruler's effect. So he was able, so she was able to tribute summon two level sevens, si Prima Gitarna and uh, the other one, Esperade of the Smashing Light. That is her new monster. Na introduced yari to sa episode na to. Okay, we all thought that Prima Gitarna's effect is well really decent, but when combined with Esperade's effect, she was able to beat Gakoto. Okay. Now, si Esperid, as long as there are two monsters, as long as there are two monsters, she can, she can attack. She can attack repeatedly. A la Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning. Only, ginawa mong babae at binigyan mo ng gitara. Ganon ang, ganon ang style ng card, ng style ng monster na to. At yung effect niya. Okay? So, she was able to beat Gakoto. Then, ilapit, well, ilapit na siya ni Yuga, and he asked, tell me, is it blackmail? Something to that effect. Tell me, is it, is it blackmail? Well, she spat it out. Uh, may, may secret ko nga siya. Okay, doon na alata ni Yuga. It is blackmail. So, it's now the setup for Yuga versus Roa. Okay? This is the match, the duel we've been all we've all been waiting for, Yuga versus Roa. Okay, so we're gonna wait for the next episode. I cannot wait to watch this one. And based on based on the teaser, I got a really good guess that um, this will be a two-part episode. Okay, the duel will last two episodes. 
So, wow, okay. Meron pa sumigit na mga ano eh, mga yung mga kaibigan nila, uh, yung ramen, the ramen kid. <laughs> yung sumigit. Looks like the cavalry has come. <laughs> They were, him and his entourage were requested by Roa. Okay, doon sila pumesto sa, sa, what's called this? Sa VIP area sa taas. Okay, to, to serve the food. Eh, lalong giluto si Romin. Lalong gumaling tuloy pag ditwelo niya. Alright? You know what? This episode proves that with hunger, people can do anything <laughs> just to satisfy their hunger. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 11, two thumbs up! <laughs> I always expected that, um, I always expected that, that Roman will win. That Roman will beat Ga- Gaoto kasi medyo nagets ko na Because it has to be two on, it has to be, um, two on one, okay? In favor of Roa or Yuga. Pero, I never thought that the duel will run that way. <laughs> Grabe! Grabe yung, grabe, yung com- grabe yung comic release. Grabe yung comic release. Now we know uh, how much of a person Romin is. Okay? She's trying to act tough. Pero, uh, when, when no one is watching, she's vulnerable as hell. Alright? And, it, this episode further confirms how evil Roa is. Don't let that smile of his deceive you and his uh, and his good looks, right? You will you will hate him. You will hate him in this show. So again, Yu-Gi-Oh! Seven's episode eleven. Two thumbs up. Hey Yugi, that's another two thumbs up episode for you. <laughs> this episode is slowly living up to to. To that, to that guy's expectations, alright? So, wow. Can't wait for the next episode. I just can't wait for Yuga versus Roa. Come of High School, episode 7. This is where, um, this, this I think is, the, um, what you call this? The funny, the only funny part of this episode, because well, um, Team, what do call this? Team Mori, all right. See si Mori, Daiwi, and si Mira. So they're up. Okay, they're the first match of the day. They went up against uh, this uh, team. who are also they're also they're also high schoolers, but one of them is a 38 year old. Okay. Uh, late bloomer education <laughs> education wise late bloomer na siya so up for the first match is Mori himself okay <laughs> I hit the wrong pressure point <laughs> nag experimento he tried uh, the new um, pressure point technique taught to him by the old by the old man member of the six. It didn't go as planned. He got beaten easily. Walang ayon na pirap ng kalaban. The way the pressure points he um, he utilized were the ones to were the ones to immobilize his own body. Okay, so ibig sabihin on hindi pa siya sanay sa ganong technique ginamit agad sa isang laban lo and behold talo siya <laughs> that that uh, signifies his very first loss in this series pinakon ng talo ni Mori yun and it, and it came wow in a in a really awkward way okay and I thought he was going to going to lose to a, to a real to a real fight because of his stupidity. That's why he lost. So up next was Daiwi. He was able to um, he was able to subdue the 38-year-old. Okay. Wow. Oh 
Punta na pigilan! Lagon! Sa! Dragon vs. Thor's Hammer That 28 year old uh, had a haricharyo called uh, Thor's Hammer Isa lang ang, pin ang, isa, isa lang ang pinangkontra ni Daewidon His Azor Dragon stance He was able that through that sinalubo niya he was able to beat him handily Now third uh, third match Involves Mira and the other team's female member. This got very interesting. Contrasting sword fighting styles. Yung babae ng yung babae ng kalaban. Uh, it's she's into kendo, and we all know Mira, and we all know Mira. She is the uh, the sole heir of the, the the Moonlight Sword style. It's a completely different sword fighting style. So, babaan. <clears throat> the uh, the opponent was able to to disarm Mira, but Mira before that was able to to destroy the opponent's sword. Kumuha na ano nakagamit ng charyok din. Mira was able to counter that with move number 23. Eh yung uh, wind willow tinatawag niya. Sinakyan niya yung charyok ng kalaban. Tumakos siya doon sa parang makalapit siya na sipa. Boom! Now! So, so Team Soul, eh, not, not Team Mori, Team Soul. Because they, they all come from the city of, they all represent the city of Soul. Okay? Team Soul won that match. Okay. Nagpakahirap pa ito. Nagpakahirap pa ito yung, yung dalawa eh. That's a kagaguhan ni Mori. Alright? <clears throat> the lead character. The lead character because the comic relief this time. But, while all of this was going on, okay, si Q, you remember Q? The one that Mori faced just to... The, the one Mori had to beat just to be reinstated in the tournament. Sa... Sa locals. Okay. Na mayroong na mayroong charyok na parang may kaharit na ganun. We, we all thought, we all thought that he died in that, uh, in the previous episode. Kasi naka, ganun. Parang naka, parang, parang lifeless na eh. Excuse me. Parang lifeless na eh. Pero, hindi pala. Guess what's scary about Q? Halos lifeless na siya. Yung espada ng assassin, nakasaksak na sa kanya. Right? Right here. Baon na. He was able to cut that assassin's arm off with his chariot. Yung mikaret. So, akala na assassin, uy, <laughs> hindi pa pala patay ito. I'm screwed. Alright. In comes two of his associates. Two of his, um, what's called this? Two of his, yeah, associates. Na, yun talaga ang inassign ng Nox na pumatay kay Q. Yung dalawang yun. Isang pare at isang madre. Believe it or not. <laughs> Believe it or not. Nox has those kinds of members in the clergy. Yung madre, ang, ang charyok niya, baril in the form of a crucifix. Mala... Who's that, that character from Trigon that... Um, rem reminds me of that character from Trigon that has that same gun. Shotgun up na na crucifix ang itsura na cross reminds me a lot of that 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 um, that's a trigon reference that uh, the weapon the um, the female assassin was almost using parang ganun yun ganun na itsura cross the male assassin the male uh, the male associate was had wings okay so fight in shoes the fight in shoes two on actually three on one hand they got kasi yung naunang assassin medyo disabled medyo na disabled na eh he, he was able to cut both of his arms off 
So, wala. Useless. Inutil. So, yung dalawang ngayon nung nag-attend, napatayin siya. Alright? So, pak, pak, pak. Then, all of a sudden, one, one of Q's fellow commissioners stepped in to help. Siyempre. They were able to... Both, of, both commissioners were able to... Uh, to make those to make the two assassin the two remaining assassins run tumakbo hindi na nila kaya now this uh, this commissioner that helped Q has a really scary charyok in the form of a uh, of a Godzilla of a Godzilla level dragon ganun kalaki <laughs> binunod pa niya ng ibig yung dragon niya para gawing espada he can even use one of the dragon's teeth sa weapon. Pinunutan lang niyang ganun. Sword na. Oh my God, sabi ko. Oh my fucking God. Are these commissioners, are these commissioners this strong? Yung mga, are these, are these people that Park Mojin surrounds himself with that strong? Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. So yeah, they were able to survive the attack. Napa, Napatakbo nga yung dalawa eh. Yung dalawang talagang papatay kay Q eh. Tumakas. Because they, they can't handle, they can't handle both eh. Especially si Q. Kasi eh, siya mismo na may hawak ng karet. Siya mismo na may hawak. Hindi yung, hindi yung parang charyok niya. Oh! Tangi na sa likod! Taka sa likod! Wow! <laughs> If the second half of God of High School is uh, this exciting, woo! You guys better watch it till the vet to till the finale. We got we have to watch it till the finale. Now going back to the tournament, there's another team. Uh, well, Team Soul is now uh, are now observers because they're finished the fight. They lost, but they stayed on to watch the next um, uh, the next. Uh, bout nga itong isang itong isang competitor um, mukhang OP mukhang OP siya now merong dalawa yung sumugod sa kanya dinaw niya pareho pero doon sa sa babae sa babae niyang kalaban that's when he that's when he overstepped his bounds akala ni <laughs> Akala ni Mira, nakikila na naman si Mori. Mori will interfere. But no. Sinabi niya, hindi ako ha. Ayun oh. Si Daiwi pala yung nakikilab. <laughs> so, sabi niya, Tumi- sabi niya sa nagano, tumigil ka na. Tapos, winanin nga sila para ng referee. Any action you take from this point on will have consequences. Okay, so, step back si Daiwi. Ito pa lang ano, isang dinaw na kalaban. Nag-retaliate. Yung pala ang charge of his light, parang lightning. Now, his initial move was parang gumawa siya ng parang pentagram na gano'n. Wow, sabi ko. Wow, his charge of his fucking scary. A satanic symbol, yung pentagram. Punta yung bumbuo o gano'n. No? Itatapan niya sana doon sa kalaban. Naunahan siya. So, Gumante, okay, step back na si Daiwi kasi both uh, both combatants are now fighting each other so hindi na niya kailangan makialam. Medyo ano ni, stood up ni, stood up na yung ano eh. So then the episode ended with the um with the green-haired guy yung yung nagmalabis um seemingly eliminating that ano that uh, that com- that competitor of his parang parang may parang may ano eh parang may mga parang mga tusok-tusok na yun <laughs> bitin nga eh bitin yung ending so we'll just have to find out in the next episode what what happens to that guy great episode another great episode by God of High School excuse me now uh, we've seen the we've seen the thickening of the plot even further here and Looks like Daiwi has found himself a rival of his own. 
just a green haired well uh, by the by the way by the way Dai Dai we looks at looks at this guy he is not he is not going to uh what you call this I think the moment he, the moment he sees this guy again he's going to kill him <laughs> he's going to kill him he will go at him he will go at him again whether it be on the ring or on the street parang yun ang yun ang pagkakakita ko sa yun ang pagkakakita natin sa mukha niya sa mukha ni Daiwi yeah but one thing's for sure he's found himself a rival God of High School episode 7 two thumbs up okay wow that fight scene between um the two the three Knox assassins and the two commissioners that's off the chain that is absolutely off the chain another addition to the plot thickening uh, the plot thickening part okay Nas is really on the move okay talagang unay nilang unay nilang itumba mga commissioner ngayon here's another funny moment <clears throat> na-realize pala ng kasama niya na na wala siyang limiter but he is required to wear that. All commissioners are required to wear that. If you don't wear your... If the system catches you na parang hindi mo sotong limiter mo, that's equal to three, three months of... Three months without pay. Eh, meron pa siya na unang penalty. Yung... Yung pagkaka... Yung pagmamalabis siya kay Mori nun. So, you count that, that's six months. Ang itsura ni Q. <laughs> he's so worried he's so worried about his salary okay okay so Park Mujid is concerned the, the head he can't just uh, I think he can't he can't just use the um, he can't just uh, unleash the unleash the six on Knox kasi may, tour, may ongoing tournament pe. he's he's concerned with that he's also concerned with the safety of the other of the other um, entrants in the in the national tournament, syempre, he has to look out for their for their welfare. Kasi hindi naman sila hindi naman silang lahat uh, malakas ang chariot like uh, Team Soul. I think he's I think he's not worried about Team Soul. A lot of plot thickening in this episode and that fight scene, uh, like I said, between the three Knox assassins and the two commissioners. Woo! Pinawi sa lahat dun. What's up? What the hell? It's like it's like it's like playing Mortal Kombat all over again. But wow, anime style Mortal Kombat, God of High School style Mortal Kombat. So I gotta hand it to to the creators and the animators of this anime. Talagang talagang <laughs> sambahin kayo, sambahin kayo lahat. So again, God of High School episode 7. Two thumbs up. So let's wait for episode 8. I, I really want to see what happens to this guy. Um and and I hope we can confirm that this will be Daiwi's rival. I want I want to see Daiwi and this guy kill each other. <laughs> if you are, if you ask me. Okay, tsura ni Kaburaking Hyun. Decadence Episode 7. We now know what the new Kaburagi looks like. Okay, at least his avatar. And, uh, well, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to give a critique on that later, alright? But first, well, the, the synopsis. Okay? <laughs> the J.G. Ramos brand of synopsis. So, first order of business for him was to seek out Natsume. And he did. <clears throat> Not to mention, uh, we found her more assertive now. Okay? If she wants to get, if she wants to get shit done, she'll be the first to do it herself. Okay? There's now a gaping hole in the residential area. Kung saan nakatira yung mga tankers, okay? O di naglulusutan ni mga gadol. Before we actually um, seek out Natsume, he put on, he put on, uh, he put on his, he put on gears gear. Went into action. So, tumulong, tumulong si Kaburagi in, uh, in taking out all those gado na nakapasok. There were a lot of casualties. 
amongst the tankers. Hindi nakapasok ang gasoline. Natsume did her share. Of course, she's a gear now. She doubles as she doubles both as a tanker and as a gear. So after the chaos, um, they've decided to the all practically all the citizenry of decadence, all the tankers and all the gears decided that that hole should be patched. Lapad eh. Kasi very thick yung very thick yung yung wall ng ng tank. So they have to they have to patch that up bago may bago umatake na naman ng mga gadol. Because they can't attack anytime now knowing that they got they got a really large hole to escape in. So they went to work right away through not so much um what you call this perseverance. She went around town to gather repair kits. Okay? Then all of a sudden, and dami. And she hasn't and she hasn't gone through half the community yet. So, uh, tumulong pa rin mga kasama niya. Gears, the butchers, the uh, and other tankers she knows. Tulong-tulong sila. Work work went underway to to patch that hole up. Kasi talagang laki. <laughs> Even even the most savage of Gadol can get in there. Okay, that hole was that hole was that big. So in the shadows, Kaburage was watching, and by the look on his face, I'm proud siya kay Natsume of, of what Natsume is doing with her life so far. He's proud of her. Then yung nga after uh, a long hard day, nagpakita na siya kay Natsume, pero he did not introduce himself as Kaburagi. No, you know the but there was one being na naka na nakakilala sa kanya despite sporting the new avatar si Pipe. I think that karon ng inkling si Natsume. Uh, no. Natsume actually saw uh, the real Kaburagi in the new one. Nagkaroon siya ng pero siya ng flash. Parang flashback. After that, Kaburagi had an epiphany of sorts. Okay? You should see the look on his new avatar's face talaga. <laughs> mm-hmm, ano? Yung mata eh, namumula. Sa, namumula sa galit. Disgust. Grief. Anger. You could see you could see it in the new Kaburagi's face. So, by sundown, kasi pinili siya ni Jill that, that he should return that he should log off the game by sundown. So, gino, nagawa niya. He actually did it earlier than usual. So, pinuntahan niya si Donatello, who is uh, the leader of the, the sub-community the sub-community he's now in. And he said, he's going to throw a party. Of what kind? Asked Donatello. The kind, in, in effect, uh, something to respect. The kind that will destroy the Gadol factory. Ginagtawanan. Hindi na tawa si Donatello. So, he's interested. So, that's where the episode ended. Plans will be laid out. Upang inang yan. It's a bold move. Wow. Now, <clears throat> let's critique his new, his new avatar. Sabi niya, it's more, it's more difficult to use. I think, uh, there's a, a certain level where you have to, we're in, the more levels you, the more you level up, the easier it is to to use your avatar. Parang ganon yung para ganon yung sa game nila. Parang ganon yung sa game na decadence. Eh. He's he's probably entering at the lowest one. So entry level, talaga mahirap. In any online game, actually mahirap if you're entry level. Excuse me. So he is he's having a hard time. But the way he, the way it looks now. The way it looks now, um, I don't know. Eh, parang, parang siya pa rin eh. Nagbago lang yung kulay ng buhok tsaka yung skin color. <clears throat> minus the, uh, minus, minus the goatee. Parang ganun eh. All the, the, parang the game has been reset. Okay. Now, uh, the tankers are low in number, and so are the gears. Parang, 
Parang nalagasan ng population eh. Ever since the story was reset. So, yun ang pinalalabas ng episode na to. That's what the episode that that's what the episode was trying to tell me at least. Okay, they're short. Uh, decadence is short on pe- is short on humans. Okay, that's the game. That's the that's the game's point of view. But wow, it's a, it's a really good really good way to introduce uh, Kaburagi's new avatar. Okay. But I I don't see I don't see much change. Just the uh, just the hair and the skin color. <laughs> All right. Contours of his face are almost the same. It's almost the same. Okay. Uh, that's pro- that's probably the, the the reason why Pipe was able to recognize him. Kailang nita yung alus pareho yung contours ng face ng bago yung avatar sa face ng luma niya. Gave I- gave Natsumi the idea that this is this is Kaburagi. Hello, this is your boss. New, new look nga lang siya. I think that, I think that, that was, uh, that was, uh, Pipe's message to Natsumi. Kaya niya, kaya niya binati ng ganun, binati niya ng ganun yung bagong kaburati. So, they're, go, they, they're now planning, they're now planning to actually put an end to the game. And Kaburagi is, uh, is at the forefront of this. He wants to be, uh, he wants to go Fidel Castro on uh, on the system. He wants to go Fidel Castro on this. Not much, not much battle scenes, but it's it's an empowering episode in my point of view. Because well, there are life lessons to be learned in this episode. Okay? That's why I am giving it the two thumbs up. Okay? Three straight weeks ng nakaw ng two thumbs up sa akin ang decadence so, studio not congratulations to you <laughs> Congrat- so what's the life lesson now everyone here's a lesson that you should learn from Natsume everyone else wants to stay the same but she doesn't want to okay? because she fully understood she fully understands that the world is despite um, the dominance of the gadol it is still changing. Ika nga, the only thing constant is change. And she proves that. Natsume proved that in this episode. So, and if uh, everyone else has given up, why should you too? But if you haven't given up on the idea, on, on if you're still praying that everything will be, uh, everything will turn out fine, just go for it. Just go for it. Just like Natsu. Right? So, Decadence Episode 7, again, two thumbs up. Let's wait for the next episode. Remember, we're already in the second half of this anime. So, I think everything from here on end is going to be slam bang in nature. Remember, Kaburagi wants to end this game and he's taking it in his hands. Alright? And he's going for the Gadol Factory first. Because, well, in order to, in order to stop the game completely, you have to stop the Gadol, you have to stop the, you have to stop those actual Gadol from producing. Toaro kaga ko no Railgun Season 3, Episode 20. Like I said in the previous uh, review, it's gonna be a slam back out of an episode, okay? This is the scene we This is the scene which let us oh, this one. Actually, it's a death match! The episode started where or where the previous episode left off. Binabarin si Prenda. And this is yung palang gumaga nun siya. Kumaga pa ipek lang pala ng assassin yun si Yumiya. Pa ipek lang. Her real weapons are in here. Okay. Customized guns. Customized sniper rifle. CO2 powered. Kaya ang bilis. Kaya ang bilis ng dating. Kaya pag tilama ka talagang matatama. Talagang, talagang may lalabas na dugo sa'yo. So, that's how, that's how scary her weapon is. She's not an esper. Okay. Yumiya is not an esper. 
but an expert sniper. Mala ano nga siya. Mala, mala Black Widow ang dating. Pero bad guy siya. Ni! Uy, wrong target! This game of, this little game of cat and mouse ensued. They ended up, Brenda and Satin ended up in the department store being hunted down by Yumiya, the assassin. <clears throat> Sadista, si, Yuma, si Yumiya. She takes pleasure in, uh, in, in shooting at Brenda. Kasi, kumbaga, eh, protector ni, ni Satin to eh. Little does she know that Brenda is a sick as her. <laughs> Psychotic pala tong babaeng to. Yari. Yari ka, putang ina mo! Huli ka! Boom! Magaling sa bomba tong babaeng to. Psychotic pala si Blondie. <clears throat> Yumiya loves guns. Frenda loves bombs. Yun talaga ang weapon niya. Now, um, I don't think she's an expert. She's really, but she's really good at using bombs. Granada. Anything explosive in nature. So, kumbaga, habang hinahuntingan sila ni, ni Yumiya, ito naman si Frenda, nagpa-planta ng bomba wherever, wherever they may be. Ginamit, pa, ginamit din niyang pond. Satin. Ngayon ba, nag-uusap sila. Yun ang tsama niya sa atin. O, oh, ganun mo ito mga teddy bear na ito na may lalaga ko ng timer to. Ito namang si Yumi ha, lumabas ang pagkagaga. He thought uh, Satin was um, was being made was being made hostage, hostage by Frenda with all these um, stop toys na may timer. So, wakala niya talaga sasabog. Eh, hindi. Doon sumugod si... Doon sumugod si Frenda. So, the death match ensued. Okay? So, Yumiya started shooting at Frenda again while Frenda started throwing bombs at her. So, it's a little death match. Okay? Patayang umati ka po. Puta pa sasabugin niyo yung building. Mapatay lang to. They found themselves at the top of the department store. Kasi ilang floors yun eh. Ilang floors yun. Doon sila sa top na gano'n, talaga naglaban. Talagang, talagang, nagpatay ng mga Saint Sinan. So, eventually, Frenda, Frenda read her, read her weakness. Yumiya is not much into, ano eh, uh, kung maga, pag na-restrict yung breathing niya, medyo natataranta na. So, yun ang ginawa. So, Frenda decided to to detonate all the bombs she has, she has planted all over that floor. So, uso. Okay. Medyo confused na. O, doon siya umatake. Ngayon, as a provision, si Frenda, meron pala siyang oxygen mask na nakapasa sa bibig niya. So, parang siyempre, parang makahinga siya. <clears throat> she plants three Pinapato niya, triangular bombs sa bunga nga mismo ni, ni Yumiya. When she's out to the window, hanggang sa mahulog, detonates those three bombs. Poof! Akala natin patay. Pero later on in the episode, nakita nga nung buhay siya. Pero she has this prosthetic now that covers her mouth and neck. It's probably as a result of that explosion caused to her by, by Frenda. Okay? She now looks... She now looks more robot than human because of Brenda. Don't get me wrong. Don't get the episode wrong. Brenda is an ally. Siguro itong grupo ni Brenda, they're after this, uh, this group by this group that Yumi is in. We eventually later on uh, found out that the group's name is School. Yung grupo ni Yumi. Ngayon, ang pinaka-head nila, Esper, level 5. Mala acceler- accelerator na level. Kasi level 5 din sa- si accelerator. So, this is a band of terrorists. Okay? So, the episode ended when um, a 
Nancy Skill was assured that Saturn is uh, Saturn can no longer be harmed and hindi na nagpakita si Brenda sa kanya. He even invited Brenda to dinner and Brenda said yes pero hindi nga sumipot. Siguro to uh, what's called this? To, as a way of so it's, a, it's when Brenda's way of protecting Saturn para hindi siya magpapakita baka well, by the way by the way, she, uh, by the way, she decimated Yumiya, I'm sure. Yumiya is going to come after Saturn again. Magkita sila uli. This is episode 20. So, right after, it's the final, it's the, uh, what you call this? It's, it will be the last five episodes of this season for, for Real Gun. What a great setup episode, okay? And, 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 well, what a, what a way to set, what a way for a setup episode to, to start. It starts with a death match. Okay? Wow! <laughs> so, to araw aga ako na Real Gun. Season 3, Episode 20. Two thumbs up. Okay? Two thumbs up. Ganun, ganun. I love the fight scene. Okay? A fight scene between two normal humans. We're both... We're both sicko. <laughs> Talagang ito yung may expect mo. Talagang... Wow! Kung pwede nila, kung pwede nila patayin ang mga ang kaluluwa ng isa't isa, gagawin nila. It's, it's a certified death match. So, I can't wait on how the the last five episodes will unfold. Pero as in, as, uh, well, in this episode, um, he could just nowhere. Again, okay, for, for the set. It's only the second time that Yumiko is no that uh, Yumiko that uh, Mikoto is nowhere in nowhere in the episode. So now in episode 21, yeah, na, na siya. So I can't wait for on how on how the final five episodes will unfold. Okay? So we're now we're now counting it down now. So we'll be starting we'll be starting the countdown at episode 21 kasi final five episodes na. So tutok lang mga ka lifestyle tutok lang Apare Ranman episode 8 uh, first and foremost well this is uh, 701 AM and uh, really grinding right now just to uh, well, finish this uh, finish this digest but it's fun <laughs> because well this episode of Apare Ranman, well, it's not exactly fun. It's serious business, all right? Because, well, they got, um... Some of their co-entrants got, uh, suddenly got killed, all right? They, they, were on, they were on their way to, to rejoin the race one morning, and they saw four of them. Akabulagta. So one of them is the Richard, the Komatke Komatke Apare no Supreme Race. You remember him? He was one of those four that got assaulted. Okay. And what's scary? Shalang ang pinuhay. So he uh, sent the message to the other racers, including um, including Apare and Gang. Gil sent a message actually. It's Gil's gang. It's confirmed that everyone in this race will die. Nasabi na yung kay Richard. And well, Apari said, let's find them. And well, of course, we all know all the talk. He wanted revenge for the death of his father. And uh, sinabi ng Richard na there was one in, there was one with a tattoo right here. Uh, Oroto wanted to seek them out of course exact revenge umagri naman si Apare they tracked they tracked them down to this uh, I don't think you can call a town kasi parang you can say it's a um, a virtual ghost town because kasi mga yung mga nakatira eh parang parang mga patay eh pero buhay ah they're alive but they're 
but they're dead inside. So it's a virtual ghost town. And well, eventually they uh, they met up with the um, with the assailants. Sila naman ang sila naman ang ano? Sila naman ang papatayin. Kasi gilakin sila. And the next day they were about to be hanged. Ang tinra lang nila si Kosame. Doon mas kaya pagkatuwag niya. Bizarrely, bizarrely, the Gills gang spared him. Parang hindi siya worth it patayin. Doon mas yung pagkatuwag niya. And after a few hours of soul searching, He finally decides to. Um, he finally decides to let out the samurai in him, right? Show these, um, show Gil's gang how ruthless he can be, okay? how much of a killer he can be. They were about to hang up on the others. So, he was just in time to, to rescue them. Wala siyang binuhay. Wala siyang binuhay. Most especially yung leader. Yung talagang, talagang pumatay kay Hoto. Talagang pumatay sa father ni Hoto to. He challenged them to a showdown. So, confident naman tong, tong guild poster na to. Yes. He is not the real Gil the Butcher. I'll tell you why later on. But first, we got we got a we got a tell this part of the story. It's the most exciting one actually. This guy already has two guns: a pistol and a shotgun. You know what? Uh, you know what Kosabi did? He was able to evade the shot from the pistol, but the shotgun. Ooh. <laughs> Hindi lang nga sinalag yung bala. Hinati pa nang ganun. Talaga sinalubong yung bala with his with one of his swords. Umati ganun. Only a true samurai can do that. Ganun dapat katalas ang paningin mo. So wala na. Defenseless na. That's when he used his finishing move. Yung parang uh Let's just say it's a full moon stance. Patay! Patay! Okay. So, they were able to, they were able to, they were able to escape with their lives, okay? Thanks to Kosame. Now we know how much of a samurai Kosame is. He is dangerous. Don't let his timidness fool you. Ako, I was completely fooled, right? Kosame took me for an idiot in this episode. He took me for an idiot. So, okay, we, well, I said, I said a while ago that that's not the real guilt the butcher. The real guilty cigar is with those organizers. Siya mismo ang nagutos. Okay? Yo, well, talaga ang ano, yung nandito yung may, yung tato niya rito sa leeg. That's that's actually the one that killed uh, Hototo's father, Shamismo. But that's not the real kill the butcher. They were just protecting him. They were just they were just protecting his identity, actually. So the snake is still among us. So that's that's one thing. That is one that's one problem. Apare should Apare and gang should solve. It's a really good episode. Kosame got me fooled. 
basically, konsumi kami food. So, aparelan man, episode 7. Excuse me. I told the suspense for a while. Two thumbs up. <laughs> wow. Okay. I never thought Kosame had it in him. Okay. In this episode, talagang pinala, pinalabas niya, yung, pinakawala niya yung pagkasamuray niya. Okay. He can be that ruthless. <laughs> he can be that uh, merciless to his enemies. Wala siyang binuhay sa, wala siyang binuhay sa episode na to. Sa kalaban. Wala siyang kalabang binuhay sa episode na to. Wow! The plot again thickens that it's not the real guilt the butcher yung pinatay ni Kosame to, 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 rescue, to rescue the rest of the gang. That's not him. The only two that will confirm Gil's identity are Dylan and TJ. Kasi ito yung dalawa na kasama niya sa gang. Eh. They had a gang called the Thousand Three. Silang tatlo yun. Kaya pala! Sa episode... Episode 4, comeback episode ng Aparilan Man, hindi sila, ano eh, both of them, hindi sila sold sa identity na nagpakilalang si Gil the Butcher. Because, well, they know that's not him. That is not him. So, later on in episode 7, nalaman natin, that is, that's not him. May poser lang pala yun, si, oh God. God is name. The real guild the butcher is with those uh, is with those organizers. Okay, so it's a really good episode. It was the it's the first time that Aparelanman got serious. It's the first time. No comic relief, no uh, no awkward moments. No, just straight up action. Straight up action and drama. So. Wow, okay. Kosame can be a real killer if uh, if pushed to the edge. Okay. He was pushed to the edge here. Kaya siya nag, uh, kaya siya nag soul search. He was pushed. He was he was pushed to the edge. It made him question his um uh, maybe it made him question his manhood, his uh his status as a samurai. So hmm. For me, well. It's the show's best episode so far. And it did not involve Apare. <laughs> it did not involve Apare. So again, Apare Ranman episode 8, two thumbs up. We're going to, uh, well, they, they've already teasered episode 9. And uh, it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a more relaxing one. It'll definitely be more relaxing than this one, okay? Tense ito. <laughs> intense ang episode na to. So, let's see. Let's see. Peter Grill and the Philosopher's Time, episode 7. <clears throat> it is now officially a harem. <laughs> we were we were we were able to beat the teaser right. Peter had his um his innkeeper friend Tim to to house all these four. Okay. In case you didn't know, uh, Tim made his first appearance in in the pilot. Okay. Medyo medyo bebeki beki. Pero, ano, <clears throat> pero best friend siya ni, ano, best friend siya ni, ni Peter. Best friend siya ni Peter. Now, contrasting, contrasting personalities nga eh. Peter is, uh, well, he's a man's man, alright. Oh, like this. Like this, alright. He's like this. While Tim, okay. <laughs> Medyo ni baba, bebeki-beki. Pero, um, let's, uh, let's just say, effeminate. Feminine, pero he's not he's not totally gay. Okay? If he were gay, then he he would he would get into this mix, di ba? He would get into this mix. Through Tim's help, Peter was able to house these four these four women after him in. Let's 
Say under one roof. Okay. Things went wild after this. Bayan siyang maging kapit! Ooh. Ano ba to? Wala nga siyang hinaharap pero si Piglet may pero si Piglet at yung magkapatid na Ogre meron. <laughs> Wish it! <laughs> Gagawin mo! <laughs> Ayun, ito! Quantify meal or Rousal. Ano yun? Is there such a fairy? Pads is not... Junior. Ladies and gentlemen, the elephant is now in the room. <laughs> there was even a meter that um oh, let me let me I always forget the that elf that elf's name. Excuse me. The elf's name is Vegan. Then of course the the ogre sisters are yung yung month yung Pahanay si Lisa, tapos yung bunso si Mimi. So, and of course, Piglet. So, the only reason I remember this Piglet because she is so cute, okay? She's the cutest. No, uh, she's the cutest and the one that Peter ha Peter actually has a crush on, okay? Peter houses these four and it, it, well, in a heartbeat, it gets wild, okay? So, Vegan, the elf, um, sets up a, call it, a fairy counter, okay? the counter fairy for for Peter, which will gauge his arousal. Enough, <laughs> okay. Isn't Peter's um, elephant uh, gauge enough? Oh my God! But un uh, unfortunately, when it comes to vegan, Peter is aroused the least. <laughs> Peter is aroused the least. Okay. Uh, how unfortunate! How unfortunate for vegan. Okay. So, well. To Tim's suggestion, unfortunately, they all get drunk. Okay? Si Tim ba naman eh, nag-alok uh, nag ng alak. So, his effeminate friend Tim to the rescue. Wow! Pinanulon sa alak ng apat. Oh boy! All of them got drunk except for Peter. Okay? Who is what? He is a knight, so he knows his limits. Oh my best! <laughs> Wala! Bumigay <laughs> na uli. He gave in eventually! Peter gave in eventually to, to these four. So, we now have a five sum in our hands. So, eh, the, morn the, the morning after, Peter realized he has that look again. The, the look he always the look he always has in the end credits, yun, parang ganun yun. The, these four women don't don't agree anymore. Na, na, I, I, they, well, actually, they agree on one thing. Hindi nila dapat pagsaluan ng, ng isahang beses si Peter. Okay? They, they all agree. And, all of a sudden, Pati ba, pati ba naman ethics ni Peter, may treaty? 
Woo! They forge a treaty. <laughs> they forge a treaty amongst themselves. Oh my God. Is... Is Peter's penis this valuable? So as they... So as they... They, they draw up a treaty for it? Oh my God! Woo! For me, this is the show's wildest episodes. Alright? And, we, and we're not in the finale yet! Okay, we're not at the show's finale yet. Nope. We're just halfway through. We're just halfway. My God. Well, let's rate it now. Peter Grimm's The Philosopher's Time. Two thumbs up. All right. It's 7.43 a.m. right now. And I'm, and I'm laughing my ass off this early because of this show. Okay. Because of this, because of this episode. Wow! What holds now for Peter Grill? We see it in the teaser. Lovelia looks like she is coming over. Okay, lalong gulo ito. Pag nakita niya yung apat na yun. Right? So, wow. Okay. This episode made me laugh my ass off in this early in the morning. Holy shit. <laughs> to think that um, Peter would set up a literal harem like this wow okay i don't want to be again like like i've said like i always say in uh like i always say in previous episodes i don't want to be in peter's shoes right now <laughs> nope sorry peter if you're gonna give me those shoes nope no thanks you might as well throw them in the trash i don't need them <laughs> so again Peter Grill and the Philosopher's Time Episode 7 2 Thumbs Up <laughs> You know what? If this is the first time you, you saw an episode of this show You just missed out <laughs> You just missed out <laughs> My god I can't wait for Episode 9 Can't wait for Episode 9 Hey mga lifestyle You may have noticed that there's no review of Super Hexeros this week. Well, the animators put out a recap episode uh, in place of episode 8. So, they but they will be announcing when episode 8 will be aired. If you if you already got wind of when Super Hexeros episode 8 will be aired, comment below. Now, well, we've had a uh, we've had a great week. Another great week of Great episodes, great animes. There was only one anime that did not receive the two thumbs up. You may have noticed, right? I've had uh, a great time reviewing them since I've uh, what you call this. I've uh, made the reviews as early as possible. Kasi ang hirap eh, <laughs> ang hirap magawal sa oras, when, especially when you're when you're now dealing with one hour episodes. Sorry about that. So. I hope you like the format. Now, if you got, uh, if you like this format, or you like uh, the previous format, again, comment below, right there. If you missed out on any of uh, any of the previous digests, check out this, uh, check out this playlist. Okay, check out the playlist. I hope you like this uh, this week's this week's digest, and I'll see you in the next one.